Hallelujah, Jesus. Hello, everyone. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in to our first episode to a three-part series, Three Keys to Effective Evangelism. I'm honored and humbled to be able to minister and teach the Word of God here today. And today I'll be focusing on key number one, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I will be breaking down what the Holy Spirit provides us as believers, which is access, power, and authority. Hallelujah. So without further ado, let's jump right into the Word of God with the reading of our key scripture that will lead today's teaching, which is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Please, I encourage you, posture yourself as a student here today, grab your Bible, grab something to write with, and take notes. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I'll be reading the NIV translation. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will be greatly edified from today's teaching. I pray that they will receive revelation knowledge that results in manifestation concerning your word. I pray that those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit today would receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And those who have already received your baptism, Father God, I pray for a fresh outpouring of your anointing in Jesus' mighty name. And if anyone has not accepted you as Lord, I pray that they be given a heart to recognize you as the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Let's get right into it. So again, I'll be breaking down the three things that the baptism of the Holy Spirit provides you as it relates to key number one in effective evangelism. Key number one. There's three keys. Today is key number one, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit provides you access, power, and authority. And if we are to look at the day of Pentecost, when all the believers were gathered on one accord, praying and worshiping the Lord, and then the Holy Spirit fell upon them like hot coals and caused them to start speaking in tongues, hallelujah, So much so that all those in the city of Jerusalem who were from different nations were able to hear the mysteries and wonders of God being spoke in their native language. Hallelujah. So we can see that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which the disciples experienced, gave them access to the gifts of the Spirit, starting with the gift of tongues. See, the gift of tongues enables you to speak in diverse languages and allows you to speak in a heavenly language or your prayer language. Are you following me? So the gift of tongues allows you to speak in an unlearned language for the purpose of ministering. Hallelujah. And also it allows you to speak in a heavenly language, your prayer language. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, 2, where Paul makes mention of this. And it says, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are given access to the gifts of the spirit, starting with the gifts of tongues. Hallelujah. One of the vocal gifts. See, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the gateway to operate in all nine of the gifts. There are nine gifts total, starting with diverse tongues, the interpretation of tongues, prophecy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. And I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues serves as a precursor of the eight other gifts. 
as a way to help you flow in them as it helps build up your most holy faith. As mentioned in the book of Jude, chapter one, verse 20, speaking in your prayer language helps strengthen your spirit, man, and builds up your most holy faith. And I, and I believe enables you to then flow and operate in those other gifts as the spirit sees fit. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you access also to heavenly mysteries. Praise God. So again, the believers, the disciples were speaking the mysteries and wonders of God in diverse languages. So that people in Jerusalem that were from an array of different nations heard the mysteries being spoke in their native language. Hallelujah. So it gives you access to heavenly mysteries. Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus said that the Father will send a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, and he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Meaning the baptism of the Holy Spirit has the ability to reveal things not known before through divine revelation, hallelujah, as well as things you have heard, learned, and meditated on before into remembrance in that hour or in that moment, hallelujah. For example, let's turn to Galatians chapter one, verse 11, where Paul speaks of this when writing to the church of Galatia and reminds them of the following. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. See, Paul's encounter with the Spirit of the Lord on the road to Damascus gave him divine revelation concerning the mysteries of the gospel, hallelujah. It also provided him with access to prophetic insight, hallelujah, regarding things to come. For example, Paul seen in a vision, a man named Ananias that will come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So right there we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you access to prophetic insight, hallelujah. Also, let's turn to Luke chapter 12, verse 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 12, where Jesus told his disciples that whenever they are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, not to worry about how they would defend themselves or what they would say, for the Holy Spirit will teach them at that time what they should say. See, the Holy Spirit, again, has the ability to bring things into remembrance, which you have downloaded into your spirit through meditating on the word night and day. And for their case, from spending time with the word himself, which was Jesus. Hallelujah. It also has the ability, as I've mentioned, to teach you things that you are unlearned in. And all of this results in you being able to speak the word of God boldly with power and authority, praise God. Let's look at Paul. For example, after he regained his sight, he immediately went into the synagogues and started proclaiming the gospel. He started proclaiming how Jesus Christ was the son of God. And he did so with such boldness, power, and authority. And as he did so, he grew more and more proficient in proving that Jesus was the anointed Messiah. And the word of God says, Paul's power increased greatly. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit allows you to be effective in your witness. It allows you to become proficient and proving that Jesus Christ is the anointed Messiah. And with that, it allows you to increase in power greatly. Leading to my next point, 
that the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you access as well as power to do the will of God. Praise God. Referring back to our key scripture, Acts chapter one, verse eight, the word tells us, hallelujah, the word tells us that we shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, not in us, but upon us, meaning you are fully immersed, you are clothed with his spirit like armor, praise God, giving you the ability to operate in the fullness of his nature, hallelujah. Also, let's turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Jesus tells his disciples that I am going to sing you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high, clothed with power from on high. So being clothed with power allows your witness to be more effective, praise God. It allows your witness to be more effective. Again, looking at the day of Pentecost, after the disciples were baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of tongues, Peter preached with such a powerful and convicting message that the word of God says, and let's go to Acts chapter two, and let's start at verse 38. Hallelujah. Acts chapter two, let's start at verse 38. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 38. The word of God reads, Peter replied. Actually, let's start at verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So right there, it lets you know that after receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter was empowered to preach such a powerful and convicting message that it pierced the hearts of those that heard it. And it says, on that day, 3,000 people were added to the church. Hallelujah. And as it says in verse 39, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all of us as believers. Hallelujah. Once you have accepted Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, hallelujah, you are entitled to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you must believe with certainty, hallelujah, that it's yours to receive, praise God. You are worthy to be praised. So saints, just as Peter was able to do so boldly and powerfully, you can follow suit. You can have the same access to that same power because it is your right as a child of God. You are called to be co-laborers with Christ. According to 1 Corinthians 3, 9, and a partaker of his glory, according to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. How can you be a co-laborer with Christ if you don't have his spirit? And if you're not closed in his spirit, hallelujah. Because you have to go out and be as effective as Christ was. For the word of God says, these works shall you do in greater. So we're called to go from glory to glory in Christ. We're called to do even greater works than our Lord Jesus Christ did when he walked upon the earth, hallelujah. How can you do that? Through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which gives you access to the gifts of the Spirit and gives you power. Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. 
For the word of God says, For now he towers above all creation, for all things exist through him and for him, and that God made him pioneer of our salvation, perfect through his sufferings, for this is how he brings many sons and daughters to share in his glory. Jesus, the Holy One, makes us holy. Hallelujah. And as sons and daughters, we now belong to his same father. So he is not ashamed or embarrassed to introduce us as his brothers and sisters. So saints, you are one with the Father, just as Jesus Christ, our Lord, is one with the Father. Just as, just as everything that belongs to the Father belongs to Christ Jesus, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to us as his children through Jesus Christ, including his power. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name you're receiving this. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name that you are receiving this. Praise God. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. So Acts 10 verse 38 reads, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit and power. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. Praise Jesus. So being clothed in power gives us the ability to minister the gospel to the lost with boldness and the ability to minister healing and deliverance to all those who are oppressed by the devil. Let's also turn to Acts chapter four, verse 31, where it says in the KJV, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. And we also look at Mark 16, 17. Jesus said, and these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues accelerates your faith, allowing you to operate in power. Praise God. Why? Because it enables you to pray in the spirit, which then strengthens your spirit, man, which then strengthens your faith. That is why I mentioned before how I believe speaking in tongues helps usher in the ability to flow and operate in the other gifts of the spirit because it strengthens your, your faith. In Jude chapter one, verse 20, it reads, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord, Jesus Christ, to bring you to eternal life. Hallelujah. See, praying in tongues 
has the ability to strengthen your spirit, man, and keep you in a heavenly perspective and in the presence of God. Praying in tongues enables you to remain in a heavenly perspective it strengthens your spirit man and it allows you to remain in the presence of god now for my last point as i try to bring this thing home and i'm praying that you all are receiving this as i'm teaching the word i pray that you're receiving great revelation of the importance of the baptism of the holy spirit as it relates to being key number one to effective evangelism and how it is your right as a believer and a child of God. So lastly, the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you authority. So it gives you access, it gives you power, and it gives you authority, praise God. If you look in the book of Acts, chapter eight, verse 14 through 16, it shows us that the Samaritans had accepted God's message of life, but had only been baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus. They had not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Peter and John were sent to pray over them so that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not come upon them yet, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if we reread that, it says they had not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Peter and John were sent to pray over them so that they would receive. I like the word so that they would take hold of the Holy Spirit. And the reason I like the word take hold is because it empowers the believer giving you authority to know that it that this has freely been given to you when you accepted Christ as your Lord. But it's not until you receive knowledge and understanding that results in revelation that you'll be able to walk in it. Hallelujah. It's not until you receive knowledge and understanding that results in revelation that you'll be able to walk into it. And I pray that you're receiving that here today. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you power to proclaim the word of God with great authority. In Matthew chapter seven, verse 29, when Jesus had finished preaching the word of God, the crowd was amazed at his teachings because he taught as one who had authority, praise God, and not as their teachers of the law. I believe Jesus preached with such authority because he was assured of himself, knowing that he was the son of God. Having been baptized with the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove and a voice from heaven saying, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. We see this in Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. So he was assured of himself. Hallelujah. He was assured of himself, having been baptized and receiving the, Holy, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you authority. Let's turn to Mark chapter 1. Verse 21 through 26. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 26. So we have Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then we have in Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 26. Jesus is preaching in the synagogue with such authority that starting at verse 23, it says, just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come here to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. 
See, when you are a child of God who's clothed in his spirit, the kingdom of darkness recognizes you. They recognize the authority you carry. And the spirit of darkness must respect your authority. And as I continue to read, Jesus said in verse 25, be quiet, come out of him. Verse 26, the impure spirit shook the man violently and came out with a shriek. Hallelujah. So the spirit of darkness must obey your authority. It must obey the authority of the kingdom of God. And when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it gives you access to that same power and authority so that demons must obey so that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and sickness can't come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. There is a covering also that comes with authority. Praise God. Let's look at Luke 4. Verses 28 through 30. Luke, Luke 4, verses 28 through 30. When all the people were furious after hearing what Jesus spoke to them, attempted to throw him off a cliff, but divinely he was able to walk right through the crowd and went on his way unscathed. Why? Because the covering that comes with authority. There is a covering that comes with authority. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. It says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So if you see right there, petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving made for kings and all those in authority. And as sons and daughters of God, you are in authority. You are placed in authority. Meaning petitions, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving is made on your behalf. See, Christ is our mediator, and the Holy Spirit is our intercessor, interceding on our behalf. And if you notice, in most of the epistles, the author starts out by praying for the receivers of the message, praying for God's people, interceding on their behalf. Hallelujah. And the epistles often times closes in that manner. Hallelujah. So authority gives you covering and protection. Authority also gives you favor. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1 verses 14. It says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? That is how much authority you have, saints. You have so much authority that angels hearken to your word. As long as the word that you're speaking is that of the fathers. As long as the word that you're speaking is the word of God, angels hearken to your word. Hallelujah. You have so much authority that the sons and daughters, as sons and daughters, God has given the angels charge over you to ensure no harm befalls you. In Psalms 91, 11 through 12, the word of God says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Hallelujah. They guard you in all your ways, ensuring that no harm befalls you. 
So much so, ensuring that you don't even strike your foot against a stone. So he's giving angels charge over you to ensure your success, to ensure your protection, to ensure your prosperity, hallelujah. So I leave you with this as I bring this thing to a close, that as sons and daughters of God, heirs to his promises, one of which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are placed in authority with Christ in heavenly places. For the word of God says in Ephesians chapter two, verse six, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Meaning you are seated also on the right side of his throne in heavenly realms. Did you hear that? You are also seated on the right side of God's heavenly throne. Hallelujah. And according to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22, angels and authorities and powers are subject unto you as they are unto him. For the word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22, who is gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. All things, saints, that Jesus has authority over, you also have authority over. All things that Christ has dominion over, you too have dominion over. This is the benefit of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You receive access, power, and authority. Praise God. So as I close, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, you may give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge to know you better. I pray that their hearts and minds be enlightened in order that they may experience the full revelation of the hope of your calling, the wealth of your glorious inheritance that is within us who believe. Praise God. I pray that everyone viewing this teaching will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of your power, Heavenly Father, that is made available to them through faith. I pray that they will be clothed in your spirit and experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues in Jesus' name, and that they will be given access, power, and authority. Let all the people's let all of God's people say Amen. Hallelujah. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this was edifying to all those watching. I pray that you're able to take notes so that you can go back in your alone time and meditate on these scriptures in Jesus' name. And I leave you with this homework assignment. Go into your prayer closet and just worship the Lord. Worship him to no end. Hallelujah. Worship him till you have no words to express your love and gratitude for what he did for you through his son on the cross. And as you're worshiping the, our Heavenly Father and you start to fumble over your words, don't stop, but continue on and lean into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and believe that it's yours. Take hold of it. And I believe that as you're worshiping him and you lose words to utter your gratitude you have for him, that you would then start to speak in tongues in Jesus mighty name. This I pray and this I declare and decree over your life. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Until next time, be blessed.